The next example in the Bible of prophecy is Genesis 6-3, reading the KJV. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, and his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Um, if we look at this in the NLT, um, so I'm certainly not the first one to say this is a prophecy. In the NLT it reads, Then the Lord said, My spirit will not put up with humans for such a long time, for they are only mortal flesh. In the future, their normal lifespan will be no more than 120 years. And that's how the NLT uh, 2007 translates this. Um, it definitely adds the interpretation in there that this is prophecy. So uh, by no means am I the first person to look at it this way. Uh, although it seems like many people uh, think this is referring to the time between when God told Noah to build the ark and the time of the flood. Uh, this misconception is common, and I say misconception because it is incorrect according to the dates clearly given in Scripture. God did not tell Noah to build the ark until after Noah was 500 years old. And we've already looked at this, that everything keeps in chronology except for where the chronology breaks. Uh, so it says that Noah was 500 years old, and after this Noah had his three sons. And the flood started when Noah was 600. So Noah was 500 before he had Shem. And we also know that Shem was only 98 when the flood began. Uh, which was when Noah was 600 that the flood began. So that means God did not tell Noah to build the ark until after Noah was 502 years old. Because the chronology reads, Noah was 500 and then he had his three sons, and then God told him to build the ark. Shem was only 98 when the flood happened, so it had to have been that God told Noah to build the ark after Shem was born, which was less than 98 years uh, before the flood. These dates are all in the Bible, if you just cross-reference them. Uh, so we know from the Bible that it was less than 98 years between when God told Noah to build the ark and when the flood came. Um, the very, very most, even ignoring the dates about Shem, that you could argue for would be 100 years, which is not 120 years. Uh, but as it is, looking at how old Shem was and following the chronology, it had to be less than 98 years between when God told Noah to build the ark and when the flood came. Um, we read Genesis 5.32, And Noah was 500 years old, and Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Genesis 6.10-14, Noah had three sons. As parallels, Noah had his three sons after he was 500. And the earth was corrupt before God. God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me. I will destroy him with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Genesis 7, 6, and Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. And Genesis eleven ten, these are the generations of Shem. Shem was 100 years old and begat Arphahad two years after the flood. And to point out a second reason why this cannot refer to the time between when God told Noah to build the ark and when the flood came. As we have covered, Genesis 6, 1 through 9 runs parallel with the events described in Genesis chapters 4 and 5, beginning before Adam was 130 years old. Now, as such, Genesis 6, 3 was spoken by God when these events started, uh, definitely before year 235. So it was after the sons of God took wives and before their children, the giants, were born. That is when Genesis 6-3 took place, chronologically. They took wives, and then God said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. And then the sons of God and the daughters of man had their children described as giants. So who was God speaking to when he said this? Uh, the most obvious answer would be he was speaking to the sons of God and their wives about their children. And this took place back before year 235. 
uh, probably prior to year 130. So this is another reason that the 120 years mentioned in Genesis 6, 3 cannot relate to the time period between when God told Noah to build the ark and when the flood came. So having made that clear, uh, let's look at this again. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his day shall be a hundred and twenty years. Some people consider this to be a prophecy. Uh, considering the NLT translation, there's definitely people that consider this to be a prophecy about how long man would come to live. And it definitely is a prophecy. It's different than the other one we looked at. Uh, God spoke this proclamation right after the sons of God took wives and right before they had their kids the Nephilim. So, as such, the most straightforward meaning of this verse is that God was speaking to the sons of God and their wives, warning them that their kids, the Nephilim, would only live 120 years. Yet somehow, all of mankind also eventually ended up only living 120 years. We only live 120 years. Um, this can be understood as that the children of these unions, the Nephilim, had human bodies. They had human DNA. Uh, however, spiritually, they, they had evil spirits of the same type as fallen angels. And that the Nephilim had kids themselves, uh, but you have to keep in mind in my other work, you can look at this on paternal spiritual lineage. Uh, we can see between sin and death passing from Adam, as it's specified in Romans 5, to all of humanity, and I believe 1 Corinthians 12, that the spiritual attributes of the child are inherited solely from the father of the child. And we can also see this in the case of Jesus Christ, that the type of spirit of the child is the same as the type of the father of the child in that uh, God, the father, is God, and Jesus Christ, the son, is also God. Um, and we see this in the sin and death pass from Adam, and it's specified just from Adam, one man, uh, to all of his children, uh, that he passed on uh, spiritual attributes to his children, and uh, it's just counted from him, so it just, it comes only from the paternal line. And for anyone who's familiar with the uh, concept of the Nephilim upon death, that their spirits became demons upon the earth, um, this is also possible to be derived from paternal spiritual lineage, that the type of spirit and the spiritual attributes of the child come solely from the father. In, in the process of multiplication or reproduction. And so when we're looking at this prophecy, understanding paternal spiritual lineage, understanding that the Bible calls the Nephilim men, and that they had human bodies, though uh, they were giant, um, which indicates one genetic abnormality and only living 120 years, which tend to indicate another genetic abnormality from the original blueprint of humanity uh, from Adam, uh, because Adam and the generations that followed him on average lived 850 years. I'm going to do another video on this, hopefully, in the near future that will explain this in detail. If not, you can read my website for lots of information explaining all of this out. But we aren't going to cover all of this here in detail. Um, you can see my Case Against Enoch video, it has that in there, or there's plenty of articles to read on my website which explain all of this in detail from the scriptures, and also taking into account our knowledge of the modern science of genetics. But just in brief, uh, we see this genetics chart and how it worked, but that the spirit of the child passed solely from the father, uh, so the fallen angels there in Genesis 6, their children, the Nephilim, they had the same type of spirit, immortal, evil spirits. Uh, so then when their bodies died, they became demons. Uh, but they also seem to have had daughters. And if a Nephilim had a daughter, or a fallen angel, if any of the original Nephilim were daughters, if she were to, a Nephilim female, was to have, or the daughter of a Nephilim, 
was to have children with a human man. The child would have the inheritance of the human father spiritually, where the child would have a human type of spirit, which is different than a fallen angel type of spirit. So if a daughter of a Nephilim had a child with a human man, the children would be human. The children would have a human type of spirit, uh, the same as we all do. However, they could also inherit genetic corruption from their Nephilim mother, uh, including giantism and also including 120 year lifespans. And this uh, a genetics chart uh, shows this as to how this worked, uh, but you can read this in detail on my website. And also look for a video in the future, hopefully, God willing, on the Nephilim. So we can see that at first this prophecy applied to the Nephilim. The Nephilim only lived 120 years. They had genetic abnormalities. Um, it seems that the DNA that was contributed by their fathers, the sinning angels, was nearly identical to that of humans. Um, if you had compared it to the DNA of Adam, it would have been nearly identical it seems, as to what they contributed to the reproduction process. Um, however, it was corrupted in comparison, so nearly identical, but corrupted, uh, resulting in giantism, that seems hereditary, and also 120-year lifespans, uh, genetics for 120-year lifespans. So the Nephilim all lived 120 years, but it makes sense that is eventually the rest of mankind only came to live 120 years, that this is rather self-evidential that the Nephilim had daughters and that the genes therefore were passed on to humanity who have human spirits. So, the Nephilim were the first to live 120 years, but then the rest of mankind Though human in their spirits, and though human in their bodies, uh, inherited some genetic corruption that resulted in 120 year lifespans for the rest of humanity. So the key prophetic word here in this prophecy is the term man. Um, in the first instance, man referred to their kids, the Nephilim, uh, who are called mighty men of old, men of renown, uh, they're called men, Enosh, in the next couple verses, um, on account of their human bodies, not the type of spirits they had, which were not the spirits of men, but on account of their human bodies. They were called men. So the key prophetic word here is man, which in the first instance, man referred to the Nephilim. But in the second instance, the word man referred to all of mankind, eventually, human, mankind with human spirits us. They referred to all of us who generally on average don't live any more than 120 years at the utmost. Um, so from this we can see that a prophecy can have a literal fulfillment both in the near future and also in the far future regarding two different things that are described by the same word. But this word can have two different meanings. In this case, what we're looking at is that there was a fulfillment in the near future with the Nephilim only living 120 years. There was a fulfillment in the far future with uh, genuine mankind only coming to live 120 years. And so this word is regarding two different things that are described by the same word. We are man, and the Nephilim are called man. Um, however, so this word has two different meanings um, and refers to two different things. From this we can see that a prophecy can have a literal fulfillment both in the near future and also in the far future. In this case, the near future was the Nephilim and the far future was mankind having human spirits, as we all do. Um, so the prophecies regarding two different things are described by the same word, man. But this word has two different meanings referring to two different things. Um, the Nephilim 
and then humans, which had different types of spirits, but they both had the same bodies of human bodies, human DNA, but with the Nephilim having genetic corruption, which then eventually passed through to the rest of mankind, although spiritually mankind was kept pure. So we're all human, we all have human type spirits, but the bodies of mankind did inherit the genetic corruption that was introduced through the Nephilim, of both of the giantism and also of 120 year lifespans. So from all this, we can derive point 10. Prophecy can have a literal fulfillment both in the near future and also the far future regarding two different things that are described by the same word. But this word having can have two different meanings referring to two different things. 